Hello everyone and welcome back to PC Retro Tech. In recent videos you guys seem to have been really fascinated by the old graphics cards and standards that I've been looking at. But I want to switch it up a little bit today and talk about this card here. Now this is not a graphics card. Uh, I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is just yet, but there is a little bit of a hint sitting right next to me. In the early days, IBM were really dominant in the PC marketplace and everyone expected that they would be the first to produce a machine based on Intel's new 8386 processor. But as we know, this is not what happened. Compaq actually beat them to it. Uh, this is their effort here and uh, if you have one of these, really look after it. These are virtually unobtainium and uh, as a result, really expensive. But a little bit later, Intel released uh, their 386SX processor, which was a cut down version of the original 8386 with a 16-bit data bus instead of 32. And this made machines much cheaper to manufacture around that CPU. And so that's what I have to my left here. We've seen this on the channel before. It's my Compaq Desk Pro 386S based on the 386SX processor. Uh, it actually survived its journey fine from uh, Germany to the UK after I moved recently. It's a little bit dirty, uh, it's just been on shelves and in boxes, uh, pr probably needs a bit of a clean up. But this is actually not the machine that we're going to be looking at today. Uh, you see at the same time as the 386SX, Intel also released the 386DX. Now this wasn't actually a new CPU as such, it was really just a rebrand of their existing 8386. Uh, so it had the full 32-bit data bus, and I haven't checked whether there might have also been some die revisions or die shrinks uh, for that as well, but uh, it, functionally it was identical to the original 8386. And of course Compaq produced machines based on this as well. And I've managed to get my hands on one of these, and it's in a bad way, it's going to need quite a bit of work. But if we can get it to go, then we should be able to compare apples for apples uh, with machines made by the same manufacturer uh, between the 386SX and 386DX. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. This is my Compaq Desk Pro 38625M. Now I'm not 100% sure on the numbering, but uh, 25, based on the other brochures, is the processor speed, so 25 megahertz. And uh, the M's seem to be uh, DX machines, although uh, Compact just calls them a 386 and doesn't specify SX or DX. But in the case of the E's, I'm really not sure what the difference is. Compact just says they're for people sick of their 286s. Uh, the N's, I'm not 100% sure, but they seem to be intended as network connected machines, which would certainly make sense of the letter N. But I don't know what the M or E might stand for. Maybe E is economy. If you know for sure, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, at any rate, uh, let's open this up and uh, we'll take a look inside and see what needs to be done. Now if you watched my videos just before I left Germany, I actually showed this machine on the channel. And I was going to throw it away uh, because it's in a pretty bad state. Uh, there's all sorts of bits floating around inside it. Uh, there's a bag of screws here. Uh, and there are some cables which it wasn't clear where they plugged in. Uh, I think there's another one down here somewhere. And you see they have proprietary connectors on them, but it turns out that they actually plug into card edge connectors, which you can't see at the moment, under the power supply, and we'll get a good look at those a bit later. And there's actually a floppy drive in the machine, and uh, hopefully that's the correct one. Uh, there's no hard drive, but I have a drive that was actually used in a Compact 386. And in addition to that, uh, the connector actually just has an ordinary IDE connector on it anyway. It's only the other end that plugs into the main board that has the proprietary compact connector. So I'm kind of hopeful that that will all work. Uh, the other problems with this machine, there's no CPU. There's a CPU slot here, and there's also an expansion memory slot. Uh, and I guess you can probably uh, figure out what that uh, mystery card is that I showed at the beginning of the video now. Uh, the other thing that's wrong here that I'm aware of is the power supply. Uh, this was open when I purchased it, and there's a big notice on the back in German, which I'll show you shortly. And I'm guessing that this doesn't work. Uh, so we'll obviously need to check the rails and make sure we have correct voltages before powering anything up. Uh, but if we can get this to go, uh, it'll be really cool. This is an extenderizer machine, so 32-bit slots, 
and I have no other machines like this, so uh, it really will be fun if we can get it to go. Now, it'd be great if we had a service manual for this. Uh, here's the one for the original Desk Pro 386, and uh, yeah, it's really detailed. If you want to take the power supply out, you unscrew the screws and then take the supply out. I never would have thought of that. Uh, so much detail. Uh, thanks, Compaq. Now I've pulled out the power supply board and uh, I've dusted it off with a brush. It's not perfect, but it looks a little better than it did. Uh, now it should be safe to work on at the moment, although you always have to worry about the charge stored in these large capacitors here. And of course, as soon as I plug mains voltage into this, all bats are off. Uh, but for now, I just want to check out this connector. Uh, this is the back side of it here and it plugs in underneath here into the main board and that's where the power supply rails are. Uh, I found a diagram on Vogon's uh, forum and basically there should be a block of seven pins all connected together at one end and seven at the other end and this should be ground and five volts. I'm not sure which way around. Uh, so you can actually see that delineated on the PCB here. So it's uh, easy to see that all seven of these uh, should be connected and uh, similarly uh, with those seven up here. Uh, but there should be a voltage sense pin. Uh, now I'll just see if I can find that. Uh, not that one. Uh, yeah, it seems to be this one here. I'll just check that there's not anything up the other end. And uh, yeah, there's not. So uh, these are not connected and actually there are no pins in the connector on the main board. So that definitely uh, figures and so this end uh, is where the voltage sense is and so that means that these pins down this end should be the ground. Mm -hmm. So I'll go around and just check for shorts to ground uh, on all the other pins and uh, just make sure that we don't have any uh, really obvious potential problems here. Um, I'm not seeing anything uh, so I think we're probably okay to power this on. I, I guess I should check uh, 5 volts and ground and it did beep, but uh, it's saying almost 39 ohms. So I'm hoping that's okay. Uh, so I'm gonna power it on and uh, we'll see whether or not any smoke comes out first of all. And then uh, if we have uh, realistic voltages here, of course I'm gonna be staying uh, as far away from the business end of this as I possibly can. Now this is what was taped over the back of the power supply here and uh, it actually says, uh, watch out, uh, the previous owner, cause of death was, uh, no, I'm just joking. Uh, it says, watch out, uh, please no uh, don't connect any electricity, computer and power supply have been tinkered with. Uh, so this is not a really good sign, um, uh, but uh, I think the only way for us to find out uh, what's wrong is to plug it in. And I'm going to do that very gingerly uh, with my arm really quite outstretched here uh, without going anywhere near it. And at least when I plug the power in, uh, nothing has happened. And of course, uh, at the moment, that's because I haven't switched anything on. And fortunately, the switch is much further away on the other side. Uh, so I'm kind of expecting flames and a loud noise here. So I'm going to close my eyes. And there's nothing. So uh, this is a good sign so far. Uh, I don't see any smoke and uh, maybe we're okay. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is measure those voltages. Now I wanna do this fairly quickly because there's no fan and things will heat up. Uh, so I wanna measure five volts uh, on this side and there should be also 12 volts uh, down near the end. And then I should have a minus 12 and minus five up this end. Uh, so I'll go ahead and switch it on and uh, we'll see what we can measure here. So uh, these should all be ground and I should get 5 volts. And uh, initially it's 5 volts and then it seems to drop away very quickly. Uh, you can see it flashing uh, through different voltages here, uh, which is a little bit strange. But uh, anyway, that's presumably how it's supposed to function. And uh, we want 12 volts up here. Uh, it does seem to go up to about 11 and uh, we should have minus 12 here. Uh, looks okay and minus five uh, here. I'm not seeing anything on the minus five volt rail so that could be a problem. 
Uh, but anyway, at least we don't have any wild voltages, so I'll switch it off. Now I've put the supply back in and I've actually connected the fan this time. Uh, so I'm going to turn it on and see with the motherboard plugged in, maybe it needs a little bit of load for the supply to work properly. Uh, so let's switch it on and see what happens. Uh, actually the fan spins, so that's a good sign. Um, now it's not really very easy for me to do this uh, on film and make it really easy to see for you guys, but uh, let me just check that I have a 5 volt rail there. And now look, it's completely steady. That's fantastic. And I should have, uh, I think, 12 up this end. Great. And uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to the other ones. Uh, maybe I can get one of those. There's minus 12. Uh, actually, might just manage it. Minus 5. All right. So it looks like the supply is producing correct voltages, which is fantastic news. So now we come to that card, uh, which I talked about earlier in the video, uh, the mystery card. And of course, this is a CPU card, and it should also have some RAM on it, I think, at this end. Now, I've noticed that this bag appears to have never been opened. Uh, it's uh, factory sealed, as far as I can tell. Uh, so I apologize if when I open this, uh, the lighting or focus is not 100% cracked. Uh, I'm only going to get a chance to do this once on... Uh, video. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, pull this open for the first time in my goodness knows how many years and uh, see what it looks like uh, up close. Uh, so I'm just going to pull that sticker off. Uh, looks like I might even be able to save the sticker which is amazing. Uh, so let's pull it out and take a look and I apologize that the audio is probably also really crappy here. Uh, looks like it goes uh, this way around. Uh, and yeah, so this is the 386DX processor here. Uh, I guess there's a chip set on here. This would be the RAM, and this would be for a 387 coprocessor. Uh, so let's hope that this is the right one for this machine. Uh, it does seem to line up, and I did check it before I uh, bought it, uh, that it was the right thing. And uh, many thanks to Jim Leonard, aka Trickster, who actually picked this up in the US for me and mailed it to me after I got to the UK. Uh, I just saw this online uh, a few days before I was due to move. And if I'd ordered it, then it would have ended up uh, basically arriving after I left uh, Germany. Uh, so I was very lucky that I had someone in the US that could help me uh, grab this. Once again, apologies for lighting and camera angles here. Uh, I'm just going to stick this card in. I'm confident enough that I'm not going to burn out my brand new CPU card uh, now that I've checked that power supply. And uh, it just slides down in here. It's a full length card. Uh, there's actually a clip at the other end of the thing. And uh, the good news is that I can see uh, already that it looks like it's going to line up perfectly with the slot. And uh, if I give it a little bit of a push. It's quite a, a big uh, slot to put it in. Uh, it seems to go in. Uh, so this is great news. Uh, I guess if it doesn't work, it's Compaq's fault for making the slot exactly right for it to fit. Uh, so there are actually some card edges here that I wanted to point out as well. Underneath the power supply, uh, there's actually a metal plane here, so I can't really show you that part of the PCB. But uh, this is where we'll plug in our floppy drive and hard drive. And uh, there's also another connector here just for the power uh, for the drives as well. But I actually think we have enough plugged in right now to try this out because we've got CPU and RAM here. So that's pretty much all we need uh, to test this and see if it actually works. So let's go ahead and try it out. Now I've just put in the video card that was actually in it uh, when I purchased it, uh, or at least from memory. I think it's just a 16-bit video card. Uh, but there is a special video card uh, slot, so I put it in there. And uh, let's power the machine on and see if there's any life at all. And, uh, well, it didn't look too good, but I do not believe what I said. Do you see this? It's working. I cannot believe that. It actually works. That is I don't know what to say. I'm really excited about this at the moment. I totally did not expect this to go. Now this is probably not going to work, but I've put the hard drive in and uh, it's probably going to need to be set up in the BIOS, uh, which is actually done from floppy disk on these compacts. It's not in the BIOS itself. 
And uh, yeah, it says uh, fixed disk zero does not support block mode, so I don't think very much is going to happen here. But uh, let's just press F1 and see if anything. It is flickering. It says starting MS DOS, and then it doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, so it's hung. Yeah, so it probably isn't set up correctly. Uh, so I'm going to run the BIOS setup program and see if we can fix this. Well, this BIOS setup program is actually on four floppies. Uh, it took me quite a while to actually make this. Uh, so let's see if the floppy drive works at all. Uh, it's pretty old. I don't know if anything's going to happen. Let's see. Uh, it seems like it might be going to work. That is incredible. Okay, so no logical drives available. I don't know what that means exactly. Uh, so there's the XMS memory manager. That's good because I might need that uh, later on. And let's see if it loads up the BIOS setup for this particular machine. Uh, so it says uh, supports Desk Pro. That's good. So I've actually just skipped some time there because it took quite a long time to load. Uh, so it says the computer reported a configuration error during power on self test. Would you like it automatically configured for you? Oh yes, that would be really nice. Uh, well, it certainly takes a while. Uh, and now it's actually asking for disk 3, so uh, let's give it what it wants. So it says the following changes have been made. So it's set the system and uh, it looks like there was a board in here which has been removed. So that will be one error message down. Uh, so now I want to review and modify the hardware settings. And uh, let's see if there's anything uh, that I can change with regard to the hard drive. So I'm going to skip adding or removing boards because I think it's probably got that correct. Uh, but just let's have a look at the other details here. And it does seem to have selected Type 27 drive, which is what we want. So who knows? Uh, maybe we're done. Uh, I'll press F10. Uh, so actually, I just want to now save and exit and see what happens. Uh, so let's save and restart the computer. Well, here we go. Uh, so we're now trying to boot uh, from the hard drive again. Uh, there were no error messages this time when it booted. And look, uh, this is getting further this time. I'm getting excited. Uh, it does look like it's working. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, well, let's just see if something will run. Uh, let's go into, let's say, uh, into FS3 and see if it'll run. Uh, probably there's not enough memory to run this, but uh, maybe there is. Actually, it's working. I just can't believe that. That's absolutely fantastic. Uh, so, this is a completely working computer. Uh, I am absolutely gobsmacked. Well, take a look at how smooth this is. I mean, this is just a 25 MHz 386 and yet it's playing Flight Sim 3 uh, really well. Uh, so I'm actually really impressed by this. Uh, I guess uh, we have to try out some other games now and just see what this is like. Instead of playing some games, uh, let's run the Unreal demo uh, by Future Crew. Uh, this was 1992 and I've installed a Sound Blaster, uh, just an 8-bit one, uh, so that we can run this. And uh, this is not a particularly fast machine, so I'll run it at 16 kilohertz. It says that you really should run it on a 486, so this will be a really interesting test for this machine. Now, I've set the two machines up and recorded them separately. Uh, so we've got the DX on the left and the XX on the right. And I hope the audio levels are all right. Uh, people uh, complain a little bit uh, that the sound for the music is too loud. Uh, interestingly, on my machine, uh, the voice is way too loud, so it does seem to depend on uh, whether you're using headphones or what kind of audio you have. Uh, but I think you can see uh, immediately that uh, the SX is really struggling compared to the DX. Um, in fact, the DX is so fast here uh, that I really have to check whether I've actually got a 386DX or a 486DX. And if you look here, it's just a slideshow on the right uh, when all the objects are appearing, and it's dead smooth on the left. Uh, so that is really an impressive difference, much more than I was expecting. Now, there are a couple of other differences here. So uh, obviously the DX is 25 megahertz, and the SX is only 16. But in addition to that, uh, there's onboard video for the SX machine 
uh, versus a Paradise 88 chipset 16-bit uh, VGA card on the DX. Now I don't think that actually makes any difference because I've done some timings of the uh, video subsystem on the SX previously and found that it was actually quite quick. Uh, so I don't think that's actually a problem here. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, can we just marvel at how amazing this demo was for 1992? Uh, you know, Future Crew uh, really are credited with uh, you know, convincing people that you could do amazing demos on the PC. And uh, some of their work is uh, just uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, so, you know, I can scarcely believe that on a 386, not even a fast one, I mean, this is not a DX40 or something, uh, it's so smooth. Now, uh, this effect here, you can see it's pretty much the same on both, and that's because it's just palette cycling. So, there are a few uh, cheaper effects that they did. Uh, and unfortunately, at this point, the SX uh, video cuts off. Uh, that's because for technical reasons at the moment, I'm limited to just four gigabytes of uh, video. And uh, there's also no sound anymore, you'll notice, and uh, that's because uh, for some reason, uh, the second half of this demo just doesn't play any sound, actually on either of my machines. I'm not sure if it's uh, supposed to be like that or not, but uh, at any rate, uh, it did happen on both. And yeah, just take a look at this uh, texture mapping uh, with distortion as well. I mean, it's just incredible uh, what they were able to achieve uh, way back then. Um, I'm really, really impressed that this works at that speed on a, a sort of moderate speed 386. And yeah, to have uh, this kind of thing, and uh, this is actually uh, three-dimensional as well. It's not just two-dimensional. Well, I have checked that this is actually a 386.25 and not a 486, uh, so the performance really astounds me at this point. Uh, Compact did an amazing job and in a moment I'll check uh, to see if there are any reviews of this machine from around that time. Uh, now I did actually have some cards uh, with memory which are compact cards but unfortunately I've just had a look inside and there's only a really small uh, connector at one end uh, that these could plug into inside the machine uh, not uh, this connector here so uh, I'm almost certain that these cards uh, don't actually go in this machine, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, it means that I am actually restricted to 4 megabytes, which is not a huge amount for four, uh, 386. Um, the other thing I need to do is fix up this hard drive here. It's just floating around inside there. There's no uh, 3.5 inch bay in there. So I have one of these, and I think uh, this should go in there okay. Uh, the only problem is that the cable on the back of that hard drive is so short uh, that uh, I'm not even sure if I can maneuver it into place inside the bay, so I don't know how Compaq uh, would have actually done this uh, back in the day, but I certainly don't have the mounting hardware that they would have normally used. There are some screws up here, but they don't match up with this drive, so perhaps uh, the original idea was to have the drive mounted at the top here, and there was a, a particular drive that you had to use. Uh, that's not going to work in my case, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, the previous owner also uh, didn't give me all the screws, I think. Um, at least there's a whole load of them missing from the power supply. And so I'm going to go through a big bag of computer screws here and see if I can find some that will match. But then I think we're in pretty good shape and we'll put it back together and clean it all up. Well, I hit a little bit of a snag with the hard drive. Uh, it turns out this bay is actually wider than a normal five and a quarter inch bay by... Uh, really quite some distance and there's nothing to screw into anyway it's designed to have rails in there so I've actually just gotten very lucky and uh, found this it's a bracket uh, I just found it in a plastic bag uh, in my cellar and it has two rounded tops just like the ones on the top here and I can actually mount a hard drive to it uh, I've just got two screws in there at the moment but that seems to be quite solid and uh, yeah, it just fits. I mean, really just fits um, in here. And uh, the, the screw holes match up. So I assume that this was at some point a compact part that I pulled out of something else. And that looks to me like it's going to solve the problem. The cables do actually reach, which is 
just unbelievable. So I've gotten extremely lucky once again. Of course, in the end, I didn't find the screws that I was looking for for the power supply, but uh, one of them was actually floating around inside the lid of the case. Uh, the other ones, uh, the holes seem to be different threads. So I think they're show holes. Uh, they're not really meant to have screws in them. They don't actually hold anything structurally. Uh, so all that remains is to put the lid of the case uh, back on and uh, then we can uh, start cleaning it up. As for reviews, I only managed to find this article in PC Magazine from 1991. And it says that the, uh, the Compact Desk Pro M line of computers was upgradable from the 25 MHz 386 all the way up to 33 MHz 486. So perhaps the M stands for modular or something like that. You just replaced that CPU card, I presume. And uh, yeah, it was really expensive. With a 120 MB hard drive, it was $4,000. And they point out that, you know, for 5700 you get a top-of-the-line 486. Uh, so it really wasn't that great value. Uh, there wasn't enough memory, uh, it thrashed the hard drive a lot, and uh, some of the software that came with it was buggy. So I don't think they got a very good review. Uh, on the other hand, I have seen a few of these come up over the years, and uh, so maybe uh, they actually did sell a few of them in the end. Uh, the E model apparently has an ESDI hard drive, so I'm still a bit uh, unsure what the lettering stands for, uh, but at least we know that this was a uh, business desktop machine. There's a few things I need to do to clean this up. There's some stickers on the side that I want to take off. They're just from uh, basically when it went in for servicing. There's also a little red mark here, uh, which I want to remove, and you can probably see, uh, maybe not too well on camera, but there is a mark here from where a monitor has been sitting on the top. So I'm going to clean all that off. Uh, the only other thing wrong with it is there's a small crack in uh, the plastic in the back there, but uh, I mean, you're not going to see that at the back and it's really not a major deal anyway. Uh, so I've just got some warm water and uh, I'm just going to uh, go over it with some uh, just ordinary dish soap at the moment, uh, just to see how much gunk I can get off. And it looks like it's going to get a fair bit off. I don't want to use any harsh chemicals on this because, uh, you know, I really don't want to damage uh, such a nice machine. Uh, so I'm not going to bother about making it, uh, you know, the cleanest it can possibly be uh, here. I just want to get it a little bit better than it currently is. And uh, yeah, then we'll uh, do the big reveal. There's no need to adjust your sets. Uh, this is the same machine, exact same lighting conditions and camera. Uh, it's obviously a lot cleaner now, but in the end I did use a slightly stronger chemical on the top uh, But I wiped it off again with the dish soap and water just so it wouldn't continue acting on the paint uh, I did get most of that red mark off. Uh, the stick has just peeled off. There's a little bit of residue left But it's not too bad and I think this is just about as good as it's going to look uh, so let's get it all set up for the final reveal, and uh, then we'll talk about uh, what we've discovered here. And here it is with the compact monitor, keyboard and mouse, and I think it looks stunning. I think this machine is a little bit of a well-kept secret. Uh, there seem to be a few of them out there, but uh, by and large, I guess most people just look at this and say, well, it's just yet another business machine. Uh, there's lots of articles about the early compact 386s, but not this one. And yet, Compaq seem to have made absolute leaps and bounds in performance here. Uh, so I really am loving having this and the SX as well. Well, in the last video, I mentioned there'd be two new hardware videos coming up. And obviously, this uh, 386DX was one of them. Uh, the other one related to this card here, which is a Tiger card, uh, which a viewer set me up with. A really interesting graphics card. Unfortunately, it isn't working, and uh, I've tried virtually everything to get it to go. It just basically says the uh, ROM is corrupted, and the manual has this uh, as a potential failure, but uh, the things that it suggests to fix the problem just don't work. Uh, so I'm going to need to get parts for that, and I think it's not worth making a video until uh, I can get it working, because this is a card that we can actually program. 
and uh, it's really one of the earliest GPUs, if you like. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to getting that going, but uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go back to uh, some other topics, and uh, hopefully you'll join me for that, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.